Well, hello, physics folks, and welcome to Doc Onco Physics. My name is Keith Onco, and today what we want to do is take a look at one of Newton's laws problems, and uh, has to do with two blocks that are connected by a rope, and we'd like to figure out the tension, oops, the tension on a rope that's connecting the the two blocks. Okay, and the two blocks have different masses. All right, so let's, uh, let's put together some numbers here so uh, we have some information. So we're just going to say that this block has a, a mass of 3 kilograms, and we'll give this one a mass of 8 kilograms. And let's say, we'll say that uh, we're pulling this with an applied force over here of 30 newtons. And what we want to do is we're going to figure out two things. One is we're going to figure out the acceleration of the system. And the second thing is we're going to ultimately figure out what the tension is in the rope between the two blocks. Okay. Now, in our system, we're going to assume that our rope or our cable is a perfect cable. There's no stretch involved in it. If there were, there would be a lot of other things going on. But we're going to assume it's a, it's a perfect cable. So, as with any of Newton's laws, right, the first thing we have to do is we have to identify our objects that are in our system. Okay, and the first object is going to be block one, right, or M1. Okay, the second object is going to be block two, or M2. Okay, now the rope that we're going to use to pull these blocks, right, both that rope and that rope, we're going to consider these to be perfect ropes. And when I say perfect, I mean again, there's no stretch to them and they are essentially massless. Now, is that the case in, in reality? No, uh, but in uh, analyzing physics problems for first year physics, we make those assumptions. Okay? If they had some mass, we'd have to, we'd have to make those, uh, those considerations as well in the problem, but we're going to assume that they're massless. Okay? So what do we do with a problem like this? Well, we have two objects. We need to identify the forces on each one of the objects. And so, so that's the first thing that we're going to do. So let's pick M1 first. What are the forces that we have on it? Well, one of the most obvious ones is the force due to gravity. Okay, the force due to gravity, and that's going to be M1 times G, okay, going in the downward direction. We also have the normal force. Okay. All right, and the normal force is the opposite in this case of the force due to gravity because the, the blocks are sitting on a table and they're not accelerating. Um, we have not said anything about friction, so we do not have a frictional force on either one of the blocks. We're assuming that the surface is perfectly frictionless. Okay. Um, now, block M1 is being pulled by this rope over here, and so there is a tension in the rope Right, that is pulling to the right as far as block M1 is concerned. Right, and that's all of the forces that there are on block M1. Okay, now let's look at block M2. Well, block M2 has some similar forces. It's got the force due to gravity over here. And I'm going to call this FG2. or should call this FG1 over here. FG2, and that's going to equal M2 times G. And it's also going to have a normal force, Fn. I should call this Fn2 and this Fn1. All right. um, what other forces are on block M2? Well, we have this 30 Newton force over here, the applied force, and that's to the right. Okay. And we also have a force caused by the tension in the cable. All right. Now, what's the direction of that force going to be? The direction that force is going to be to the left. Okay, remember that any time we have a rope or a cable, the force is always going to be pulling away from the object. So in the case of the uh, the rope or cable to the right, right, that for that force has to be pulling to the right, right. In the case of the cable to the left, the only thing that a cable can do is pull, so it's got to be going to the left. Okay and the pulling force is going to be due to the block M1 over here because it's got some mass. Okay, So those are all the forces on our two objects. Right? We have three forces on M1 and we have looks like four forces on M2. Now 
Let's look at the y direction forces first. Are blocks accelerating in the y direction? No, they're not. They're, they're sliding on a table left and right, but not up and down. So the sum of the forces in the y direction for, say, block 1, is going to be the normal force on block 1 minus the force due to gravity on block 1. And what's that going to equal? It's going to equal 0 because the acceleration is 0. So is this going to supply us with any information? No, not really. It just tells us that the normal force for block 1 is equal to the gravitational force for block 1. We're going to find the same thing for block 2 in the y direction. Right? We're not going to get any additional information from block 2 in the y direction. What's interesting in this problem is the information in the x direction. So let's, let, let's write the formula for the sum of the forces in the x direction for block 1. So notice I've written subscripts down here, the x and the 1. The x stands for the x dimension, and the 1 stands for block 1. Well, what are the forces on block 1 in the x direction? Well, we have T, the force due to tension, okay? And that's really it for block one, M1, okay? So those are the sum of the forces, right? The sum of the forces is equal to T. Well, what's that equal to? Well, remember that our equation is the sum of the forces is equal to M times A. Well, we've, we've covered the sum of the forces. It's just T for block 1. And it's going to equal MA. Well, what's the mass of block 1? Well, it's 3 kilograms. Okay. And what's the acceleration of block 1? Well, we don't know. We're going to call that A1. Okay. And that's all we can really do with block 1. So we have, a, we have an equation. Now let's look at block Two, right? The sum of the forces in the x direction for block two. Well, what are they? Well, the positive force is going to be pulling to the right. That's 30 newtons. Okay, and we have a negative force pulling to the left. That's t, right? Is t in this case is pulling to the left, so that's negative. All right, so this is the sum of the forces in the x direction on block M2. There are no other x direction forces. There's no friction. Right. And what's that going to equal? Well, it's going to equal MA. Well, M in this case is 8 kilograms. And A is going to be A for block 2. Now, what do we notice about the accelerations here? Well, we have a system. And the system is, is composed of the two blocks and the cables. The cables we've said are perfect cables. Right? There's no stretch to them. So as soon as block M2 accelerates, block M1 is going to accelerate. And they're going to accelerate at the same rate. So that block A, uh, I'm sorry, the acceleration for block A is the same as the acceleration for block B. And so what I can do is I can get rid of the subscripts for the acceleration. I didn't do a very good job of that. Let's see if I can do a better job on that one. All right. So we can get rid of the subscripts for acceleration, and we simply end up with. In the upper, uh, the upper equation, T equals 3 kilograms times A. And the bottom equation is, is, equation is 30 newtons minus T equals 8 kilograms times A. Well, we can do a number of things here. We can substitute this in for T, since T equals 3 kilograms times A. And we could substitute that in right there for T. That's perfectly uh, valid. Or we could just add the equations together. If you notice, the top equation, that one up there, has a positive t in it. The bottom equation has a negative t in it. If we simply add each side of these equations, perfectly valid, we can solve for a, right? because we're going to eliminate t. Right? So 30 newtons minus t plus t is going to equal 30 newtons. Okay, so that's the left-hand side. That's the sum of the left-hand sides when we add them up. Well, that's, what's that going to equal? Well, it's going to equal 8 kilograms times A plus 3 kilograms times A. So that's 11 kilograms times A. All right, and when we do the math here, A turns out to be 2.72 meters per second squared. So we have A. All right, we have the, are the acceleration of our system. Well, is A what we we're really looking for? Well, there's a, a, a step in finding T, yes. Okay, But ultimately, we want to find T. So what can we do? 
Well, here's what I always do. I pick the simplest equation, all right, which would be the top one, and I'm going to plug A in there and solve for T. So T is going to equal 3 kilograms times A, which is 2.72 meters per second squared. All right? And when I multiply those two things together, what I get is a T is equal to 8.16 newtons. And there's our final answer for the tension in the cable between the two blocks. Well, I hope that helps. Have a great day.